Okay, now. The thing which we are going to do right now is that we are just going to move to uh, a different type of the logarithmic functions. You have seen that when you were doing the advanced function, no, function 11 course, because you're doing the advanced function right now. We are just going to cover some, I should say, it's a kind of a summary of the things which you have learned in order to just catch up with the rest of the chapters that we are now dealing today and tomorrow with the logarithmic equations. Okay, and now, what are gonna be these functions? Let me show you the properties which we derived so far. Okay. Okay, let's uh, start. Guys, so far, the thing which we have worked was that we noticed that if we start, everyone can see this paper here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So far, the thing which we did was that we said that we defined a type of functions that we call that exponential functions. What do I mean? We said we define a base I call it the B. And we said that base can be any number except that it should not be one and it should be always positive. Then we say that we can come and say, we say another function as single variable function G of X, which is a single variable function. It can take any form, becomes the exponent of a base, which is a positive number. Correct? And we said that we define this as a function, as f of x. That was a definition of an exponential function. Correct? It's a review for almost a lesson which we had, I should say, maybe um, a week ago. Then we said that we can, as you also noticed yesterday, because yesterday the thing which we did, we were just working extensively to just move between this side, which is the logarithmic representation, and also the exponential representation. We said what? We said that we can write it in a way, we said that the g of x can become equal to the logarithm of f of x. Teacher. Yes. Um, can you please... Um... Move the light is not very Move the light, clearly. is it good or bad? It's not good, I think. How about now? Um, um, How about now? Uh, now? Uh, no, no, no. This is okay. Is it okay now? Um, yeah. Are you sure? Uh, Everyone is fine? Sorry, guys, my technology for recording these ones, as long as everyone is close to buy anything, is very limited. I'm using a normal desktop with the desk lamp, and uh, everyone can see what I'm writing? I can see it. Is it, is it there now? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Awesome. Thanks. Hopefully some, st some stores opens and I can buy some stuff. And we said that then we just put the base there, then that's what we define a logarithmic function. Okay, that's the definition which we had. And we worked extensively yesterday and the day before yesterday to move back between these two definitions. We said that exponential representation and logarithmic representation of a function Essentially, there are two sides of a coin because you can, you can just work with them. You can just move from the logarithmic representation to exponential representation and vice versa. And we just explored seven properties of those ones. The seventh property that we also covered yesterday 
Actually, we talked about the change of a base. We talked about the change of a base. We saw that sometimes, which we're going to use a lot today and tomorrow for the logarithmic equation and inequalities is that how to change the base of an exponential function. And also we proved the identity which we derived yesterday for it. But now, now we are just going to introduce a base which is going to change the notation of the logarithmic function and it is extensively used in mostly all fields of the science and engineering. And now, what is that going to be that base? I'm going to define a function. I'm not expected now you just prove this, but we just got to cover that as I should say, as a, a, a way to show some stuff. We say that I'm going to introduce a function. The function which I'm going to introduce is going to form like that. I say the function, let me, everyone is up there. You fall asleep, guys, or you are still up there? Um, you, are, you, are, you are still yeah. awake? Huh? You are awake? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh, great. Look at that. We, I'm just going to make, make a function. And uh, let's see what happens. And I want to also please ask you, I'm going to write this function. And I just want to plot this function before we, um, we, I continue further to define the function properly for you. The function which I'm going to introduce is that. I say that I design a function. I design it to be like that. I say f of x, which is a function which includes only one variable. And one variable is going to be the x. And that function is going to be formed like that. I say it's going to be 1 plus 1 over x. However, I'm just going to, as an exp I make it a kind of a mixed function, a regular type of function, and also an exponential function, because I'm just going to put x as an exponent of the single variable function. You see that this function is a very kind of a twist type of function. You see we have x inside, I should say, base, and also we have x as an exponent. It's a kind of a twist type of function that you see x, the variable, both places, one as the base and one as an exponent. The thing which I want to do is that I want to ask you, please, before I investigate that function for you, please use your Desmos and plot this function and then share your screen. One of you, please share your screen to see how that plot looks like. Okay, please, everyone plot this function on Desmos. Yes, guys. Okay, teacher. Yes. Can you... Um... Move right. Uh, yeah, uh, it's okay. Perfect. It's okay. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Okay. No Guys, are you done? Who plotted yeah. that function first? So, we do 
plotting myself. Who's done? Who who is the brave guy who wants to share the result with us? Who is that? No one? Okay, guys, I'm gonna share my screen. But before that, guys, who really who really plotted that function? Share my screen. Sean, did you plot it? Oh, oh no! I I just came. Uh, I just wash my face. <laughs> <laughs> what time yes. you wake up, Sean? I wake up uh, at about nine. <laughs> 8.56. So, yeah, I do not know the question. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay. okay. Hey, Guys. I'm sorry I'm late. Good morning, Samantha. No problem. Samantha, so the question. <laughs> what? So the, so the graph and the teachers. Uh, I don't know. Please shower me with knowledge. <laughs> what okay. time did you wake up, Samantha? Two minutes late, uh, earlier. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. It's so right. It's so hard sometimes to just wake up sharp before nine. Uh, it's so right. Time. Because yeah. I'm in the uh, in the home. I don't have kind of the mood. It's that's okay. Good. Just keep that's going. Right. That's right. Arya, what time did you wake up today? I uh, I didn't sleep. Oh. <laughs> uh, are you, uh, how is it possible? It's so hard. Yeah, because I don't want to be late on your class. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's going to be so hard. That's going to be so hard. Yes. Uh, but you know what is that? The best thing to do, you know what is Arya and everyone, you know what is the best thing to do every morning, 9 a.m.? Mm, no. The best thing is that to study advanced function. That's the best thing that can be done. Yeah, let's go to Oliver. Oliver, what time did you wake up today? Oliver, maybe step back. <laughs> How about you, Mingzhi? Uh, I wake up at 10, uh, 8, 10. 8, 10. Oh, yeah. it's early. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which is good I, I woke up around the same time oh. around the same time 8 10 8 15 it was so hard I have to confess it was so hard yeah who else is here let's see how about you Linda what time did you wake up today five. around eight o'clock Oh, it's too early. Great. Good, Linda. Early risers. That's great. Okay, guys. And now let's back to do some cool stuff. Okay, guys, look at the plot which I have made. The function, as I said, do you have, do you, do you see my screen, which is a plot of the function? Yeah. Everyone can see that? Okay. Then it means that this is shared. Guys, look at that. I just, I said that I'm going to design, I designed the function and I said that function is going to be f of x, which is this. That was a function which I designed. I said that function is a kind of a twist because you see that also we have not the single variable, which is going to be the x, our variable not only appears as the base of the function, but also it appears also as an exponent of the function. 
Then type, that type of the function, it's very popular function in the math. We're gonna talk about that more if you happen to just, if you decide to just take, I should say, calculus course, we are gonna talk extensively about this function, but at this stage, we only need to just look at this function and understand what is the endpoint behavior of that function. Look at that. This is the plot of this function. You see that guys, when I have this function plotted, this function has two different type of the behaviors. We say that there are two endpoint behaviors. Can you, can you see these endpoint behaviors? How many endpoint behaviors do I have? Give an answer, guys. Everybody draws some answer. How many endpoint behaviors do you see from this function? Guys, please don't stay silent. Participate. Say number. Say something. Two. Yes. You have two endpoint behaviors, Mingzhe, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have, uh, you have, you mean, which one is that? The one on the left, the one on the right? Yeah. How about the one which goes upwards? Look at you, oh, it goes all the way up. It's crazy. You see? Then I think you are now convinced that we should have three different kind of endpoint behaviors or asymptotic behaviors of this function. How so? One of them, look at that, is the endpoint behavior when x goes towards infinity. Look at that. When I'm just gonna just roll the page towards the right of my screen, which it means that the x is gonna increase. X goes from five to 10 to 15 to 20. You see that guys? And I go all the way to, you see, now I'm 140. You see, I I'm, I'm can go and for example, look at that. Now, guys, do you see the coordinate of the point which I have selected? What is the x coordinate? For example, this one. Yeah. No, before that, what is the X? X, two points of X, 145. 145, look at that. I go to 154. What is yeah, the, the maximum is a year. <laughs> That's right. What is the Y coordinate of that point? 2.75, huh? You see that, guys? You see the coordinate on the screen? The x is 154.53, and the y coordinate is 2.71. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah? Let me see also, make the x even much bigger. I'm going to 300. You see? It's 300, almost 300, on the, and the x coordinate and the y is going to be 2.4, 2 point, sorry, 2.71, huh? And I continue. I can continue, go, let's say. I'm going to go to 600. Look at that. I'm almost to 600. Y coordinate is 2.71, huh? Let me go to 1,000. You see, I'm going to show you a trend and what's happening there. I'm in 1,000. I'm on the plot. I click on it. You see, the X coordinate is 1,000, but the Y coordinate is almost stable. And it remains at 2.71. You see that? You go to, I should say, to 2000 X coordinate, you see that still the Y coordinate is gonna be stable without any change around 2.71, huh? Yes? Okay, it was the first, this one, which we talked about that when we saw anything about, I should say, about the X coordinate. Oh my God, it's so hard to go back all the way to Zero. Where am I now? It's four hundred. 
Let's Almost getting there. Oh, I'm there. Okay. And now it was the thing which we which we thought. We said that if we move towards the right, you saw that if I just move towards this one, the endpoint behavior from zero, when I go all the way to let's say plus infinity, I was getting an stable point of 2.71. How about the endpoint behavior from the left wing of the function? I mean, if I starts from zero, but I move to, let's say, move to the left. Look at that. For example, I'm at minus 35. What value do I get for the Y coordinate? Guys, please say something. Don't stay silent. Don't fall asleep, guys. Mm, no. Are you asleep, Samantha? No, no, no. Huh? I'm here. Oh. oh, great. What is the value there? I don't know, sorry. <laughs> no, the, the, the value of the Y coordinate, you see, I have clicked on a point. Um, uh, 35. Do you see 2.758? That's right. Look at that. I'm going to continue. I'm not going to that far because you have seen what happens on the other side. I'm going to 100. You see, at 100, I'm showing the same thing. The y-axis is the y-coordinate is getting close to 2.71, which we discovered that from the right endpoint behavior. Do you see that, guys? Do you see that, Linda? Yes. Everyone is okay? Samantha? Yes. Are you okay? Yeah. Arya, are you okay? Yeah. Sean? Yep. Oliver. I'm okay. Ming Zhe. I'm good. David, Brian. And now, guys, look at that. You also have one endpoint behavior, which right now, this is not to our interest, which is going to be, I should say, the endpoint behavior when the Y, X, when you put the X goes to infinity, the Y becomes have an endpoint behavior. I'm going to give you that as an exercise because we covered the endpoint behavior, I should say, of a function when x goes to zero. You see, when x goes to zero, you have another endpoint behavior. I'm not going to talk about it now because uh, the purpose is to show you this right and left endpoint behavior. Okay, any questions, guys, about this plot and any features on this graph? Any questions? No. no. Hello. Hello. No questions? No. Okay. And now let me stop sharing. Then I go back. Oh, it's me. Oh, there you go. It's good I do not look sleepy. <laughs> okay. Now. Okay. Then, guys, as you notice that, when I designed... Okay, do you have the view on the page, guys? Yes. Then, then you see that if I design a function like that, and if I plotted it, then you notice that I can say that the limit, you remember the concepts of the limit, guys, huh? The limit of one plus one over x to the power of the x, then x goes to plus or minus infinity becomes how much? How much was that, guys? Mingzhe, how much is that? Uh, it's around 2.71. That's right. We said that it becomes around 2.71. And we noticed that on the graph. But in the scientific literature, for some historical reasons, they do, let just let me write that 2.71. And for some historical reasons, they do not write 2.71. They show that as what? They show that as 
E. You have seen this before, huh? Mm -hmm. The natural number. And that's, that's the thing that it's, it's a kind of a review for you that the limit of this function, when endpoint behavior involves along the x-axis, it is represented as a natural number E. Okay, guys. Then we learned that this limit of this type of function, it represents a constant, which is like the pi. How much is the pi, numerical value of the pi, guys? 3.141. Uh, five nine two six five. That's so true. Three five eight <laughs> eight nine seven three <laughs> three two three. <laughs> That's so true. You can go on with the pi because pi is a constant parameter in math. As e is that going to be a constant parameter? Then whenever you see the e, you are gonna just say it's gonna be numerically two point seven one. Correct. And now. We're going to say, <clears throat> any questions, guys, about this? Any questions? No? Not really. Just keep going. Now, we say that <clears throat> when we talk about the logarithm functions, we say that, for example, if you have seen that before, if you change the base of the logarithm function, for example, if you uh, have, uh, let me let me start, write that again like that. You say that if f of x, the function which you design, it becomes essentially the e as a base with any functions as an exponent Then you come here to write that that the g of x is equal to what? Is equal to the log with the base e, correct? Of, of what? Of f of x. But now, from moving forward, we do not write this as logarith with the base e. We simply write this like that. We said that the g of x equals to, instead we write, instead of logarithm with the base e, I'm writing ln of f of x. Then as a result, ln means the logarithm of f of x, but with the base, which is e, the nepper or the natural number. And we call that the natural logarithms. You have seen that before, huh? Yes, guys? Yeah. And now, we are just going to review some points. Any questions? Linda? Linda? No, no question. You're fine? Okay. Yes. Awesome. And now, we move on. We just uh, talked about... <clears throat> I should say seven, <clears throat> seven properties of the natural numbers, uh, sorry, the logarithm functions. And uh, let me find these properties. Okay, I'm gonna review these properties with you. Very quickly. Guys, the first property was what? The log 1 with the base b equals to 0. I can essentially change it and say the ln 1 also equals to 0. That is correct? These are the same thing. The logarithm of this is, I'm just, I'm just going to show you right now those seven properties which we learned before. Then we have the ln, which are going to be the same thing. Log 1 with base b, if equals to 0, if we change b to e also ln 1 equals to 0. Yes, it's obvious. For property number 2, guys, what we had before, we said the log of b with base b equals to 1. Do you remember that? 
if I write the ln of e, also this one should equal to 1. Because base is e, and the main argument is e, and that's why. Then whenever you see from today, we talk about l and e, it reminds you that this is going to be 1. Correct? And also on the property number three, we had this one. We had the log CB and the main argument was to the power of the N. We said that then as a result, N is going to fall off behind the log function. Then we write this like that. I'm going to write the same thing for the LN function. And I say LN of C, C, and the power is N. What is that? Becomes N, LN, C. Correct? And adapting these properties with the notation of the LN. Correct? And now, property four. For property four, guys, we said that if we have a base, then we have base the exponent is going to be a log function which is x or f of x with the base b it becomes x then you can simply write the same thing for uh, for e and you say that the e to the exponents of the ln of the uh, n of x becomes how much becomes x you see that guys yeah. I'm adapting those properties, which you have learned before, with these notations of the LN. And finally, with the most important properties, which we worked extensively with that since two days ago, property number five and property number six, then it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be LN of the multiple uh, or the product of two functions becomes the sum of ln of the individual functions and also the same thing for property number six. And more importantly, we talked about base change. I'm gonna give you an exercise now based on the thing which you learned yesterday as an exercise. I'm gonna give you a logarithm function I'm going to give you a log of e to the power of x squared plus the square root of the root of the x. The base, you know, whenever I do not write anything for my base, I mean the base is what? 10, huh? Yeah. That's right. Then I'm going to ask you, please change the base of this logarithm. Use property number seven that we talked about yesterday. Change the base to E. Okay. Use property number seven and change the base to E. I give you one minute. I think that should be enough. This is the log of the e, the nipper number, the natural number, all to the exponent x squared plus a square root of the x. And the base of the logarithm is 10. I want to trans convert, change the base instead of 10 to e. Guys, are you done now? Who is done? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I just started. Sure, sure. Please. Yeah, I'm done. Fantastic.
Thanks, Samantha. Who else is that? Minge, Aria, Oliver, Sean, Linda. Are you done? No. Not yet? Okay, now let's do that, then we just do one example. What time is it, guys? Okay, we have still some time. Awesome. The thing which we talked about yesterday, which it was property number seven, it says that if you have a log function, which is, it has the base, let's say, for example, the base is gonna be B, and it's gonna be also itself, is gonna be, let's say, for example, f of x if you want to change the base essentially that's what we talked yesterday was that we say that it becomes you have you have to, to have two lamborghinis you have log one up you have one log back then you put the base which you desire for if you want to change the base from b to a then it means that you have to just put the a here and you put your f of x on top, your f of x goes on top, and the old b goes here, and you write your b also here. Do you remember that? Then as a result, if you want to change the base of this function, you're gonna do what? You're gonna say it becomes, you have to have two logs, one on the top, one on the bottom. What is the desired base that you are gonna change it to? It's gonna be E, huh? I'm gonna write E here, I'm gonna write E there. Correct? Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna write X. the function itself up there. X squared plus what? Uh, square root X. So true. And I write what here? N. 10. Correct. I learned right now that these can be right in a different notation. It can be written as what? Ln of x squared plus the square root of the x over ln of 10. Correct? Yes, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's going to happen to this expression? Ln of this expression. Equals to. What is that? How do you simplify that, guys? Uh, and five and two. Wait. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. Not, 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 never mind, never mind. <laughs> I mean, I can we simplify thing. that further? No Teach me again. Nope. <laughs> no, we cannot go move on further. And that's essentially where we have to stop. Because they are not multiplied to expand them by using property number five, then that's where we stop. We know how much is ln10, you put that in the calculator, it becomes a numerical number, then you are ending up with a different function. Then, then essentially this one equals to what? This one equals to one over ln10 times ln of x squared plus the square root of x. Correct? Mm -hmm. Then from this form, we were able to transform it to this form by changing this, uh, I should say, by, what is that? It is nothing. By changing this uh, to the natural algorithm. 
And is it fine, guys? Any questions? Teacher, can you move this paper? I want to take a picture. Is it good? Okay, thank you. Awesome. No problem. Guys, before we go for the break, I want to give you one exercise that is going to be very relevant to the COVID-19, which is happening right now. Which is going to be about... Cholera epidemic. Cholera epidemic. Do you know what is that? No, I don't know. It's it's something like a it's a virus. Epidemic it means that when the disease becomes like COVID nineteen these days, and it becomes all over the all over the world. It's people gets infected by simple exposures. And it's a deadly virus that it's like the COVID-19. But the cholera epidemic, it's something which happened, I should say, many years ago. It happened, I should say, in, uh, it, hap it started in London. And it just went back to the date is going to be for August 31st, 1854. It's a very old, very old epidemic, I should say, a phenomenon which happened, and it starts us in from, I should say, London in England, which, uh, uh, which I should say, um, it was not as devastating as the coronavirus right now, but it resulted in lots of death uh, of the people in Europe and also in England. Mm -hmm. And the thing which we are going to do with that is that. I'm just going to use all the things which we have learned so far, okay, and, uh, and do a kind of a group work to uh, find some characteristics of the function which models the epidemic of that disease then. If we assume that, oh guys, we talk about the cumulative death. Let me choose a different color. I'm going to give you a function. I'm going to give you a model. And the model which I'm going to give you is going to be the function. I'm going to call it D, which stands for death. It means the number of the people who died. If I give you D of T, which it means that the number of the people who passed away and died, it's the number of the, the it's based on the time. And I give you the function is going to be this. 91 plus 160 into the function which I have is going to be now ln function into time plus 1. You see, that's going to be the function which represents the death toll in UK as a result of the cholera epidemic in 1854. Correct? Mm -hmm. You see the LN function, you can come up with something with something similar, not, not as simple as it is, but for, I should say, for the COVID-19, but not as simple as this one. We said that D of T is going to be the cumulative number of them. which is the total number of the death after time t. Okay. What is t? It's time. That's right. It's time, which we measured that this shell is the number of the days. And also... We say that T naught is, if you can think it of as September 1, 
1854. It's a very interesting question, guys. We're just going to do it together. Okay, now, I'm going to ask you two questions. The first question is that, what is the total number of death at September the 1st? And also, Mac, calculate total number of deaths at, let's say, what day should I say? September 20th. Oh my God, this question is super interesting. I cannot go to the break, guys, now. I'm, I'm so excited for it. Ah. It's a very relevant question because now we are struggling with the COVID-19 all over the world. And now we have a question which although goes back almost to 200 years ago. Wow, such an old time, huh? Imagine what people used to do back in 1854, what they used to drink, what they used to eat, what they used to wear. It's a kind of a history. Now, but we are going to go back there to talk about the cholera epidemic. Guys, it's one of the most interesting questions which is going to do that in the advanced function 12. And you see a kind of a modeling of a disease, which it was a kind of an epidemic. The model is this function. You can see this function, huh? Say yes, everyone, everyone can see that. Yes. Yes? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yes. The function is D of T. It means that D stands for death means the total number of the death at time t equals 91 plus 160 times ln of t plus 1. What is t? We have 2t. We have t naught. t naught is the initial time, which is going to be 0. Means that we start this function at September the 1st, 1854, which represents day what? In your model, guys. Wait, what? Huh? Repeat that again, sorry. I was not what thinking. does it represent, T naught? T naught means the day, the day which you started it. It becomes September 1, becomes the initial day. We assume that T is going to be 0. T naught oh. is T equal to 0. We call that T naught. September the 1st means the day after the epidemic has been identified in London, UK, in mm. 1854. But we say that the time, then the time, the total number of the death at time t, then becomes this function. At, for example, at September 1st, 1854, then this function, you have to plug it for the value of the t, then this is what happens. And the t is essentially is the number of the days from T naught. The number of the days from September the 1st refers back to your T naught. That's right. Then the T, we always find the times of the day, the number of the days from September the 1st. And now the question is that, what is the total number of the death at September the 1st? And what is the total number of the death at September the 20th? I want you please think of this very beautiful question to see how the LN function works by plotting this graph, thinking of the plot, and analytically answering these two questions. Isn't that a beautiful question, guys? Yes. Everyone says yes with so much enthusiasm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just said about enthusiasm. Who was yes. that guy who was so enthusiastic? Oh, it was Sean? Yep. Oh, Sean, I felt that you are feeling so much enthusiastic about that. That's so true. I'm so oh, enthusiastic now. That's right. That's right. No doubt about that. Yeah, please, guys. No doubt for. That's right. You have two parts. Please remember, you can share your thoughts with your classmates. Talk with them in case if you need to share your, your, your idea of it. Oh, guys, it's 
we need we have to take a break also do you want to take a break now or do you want to take it in 15 minutes when we are done with this question take break first please you take a break yeah i need to okay. catch up yes please yeah. guys we are now this is 955 56 please come back by 10 10 oh my god that's interesting 10 10 go we'll come back by 10 10 after the break then we do that together okay mm -hmm. awesome See you guys later. Come back in 15 minutes. See you later.
Hello guys, are you back? Yep. Awesome, great. I just fell my laptop. It was almost broken. Okay guys, we go back to this, I should say, color epidemic applications of the LN functions. Who is done with that? Did you work on it on during the break? Hello? Hello? Who is back? If you are back, please say your name. Samantha. Who? Samantha. Nice. Who else? <laughs> Linda. Mizi. Mm. Sean. Who else? Oliver. Yes, here. You're back. Aria. Here. You are back. Okay. Who is done with this exercise? Sean. I think Sean is done. Guys, please, who, who, who is not done? Do you need, how much time do you need? Do you need two minutes is fine? Please, mm. guys, first try to plot this function. Then on the plot, somebody shares the result. Who wants to share the screen with us? Wait, just, just hold on a second. Sure. Oh, I have a problem when I plug back in. Guys, we have only one minute because we just want to start a new topic. Okay, I got this. Oh no, I got I got this plot plotted done, but I'm still confused. Do you want me to share the screen yes, so please. we can introduce you? Yes, thank you. Let me see. Okay, let's see what Samantha has done. Samantha. Yes. Okay. There we go. There you go. So this is the function. Can you replace can you replace your T with X? Yep. Let's see what happens. Still the same thing. Same thing. Can you minimize? Everybody got the same thing? Uh 
Oh, I think there you go. There you go. Yeah. You see the function is behaving crazy and you see the behavior asymptotically a little bit, I should say, at that point. Mm -hmm. See? Wow. Beautiful function. Huh? Yeah. So how do you interpret that? Could you teach me again? Yeah, sure. Guys, look at that. First of all, let me give me one second. Do you want me to stop sharing? No, no, it's fine. Yeah. Fine, give me one second. What was ln x plus one? Ln x plus one. Okay. Let's go back to your result then. Samantha, do you see yeah. that? Can you see, locate a two asymptotic behavior of the function? Asymptotic behavior. That's uh, right. So only one asymptotic behavior in this function. That's right. Only two asymptotic behavior. Samantha, if you don't mind, just let me share my screen with everyone. Yes. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Samantha. That was an exceptional job. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Guys, by the way, as I said, tomorrow we are going to be surprised by something that Sean is going to play us in music. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. guys, look at that. Well, look at... Huh? Okay. Okay, guys, look at that. Let me... Let me catch up with this very quickly as we need to move on from this logarithmic function to something more advanced. Guys, look at that. The model, the function which I have on the left side, you have my screen shared. Everyone sees this graph, huh? Yes. That's right. You see that the function which I have on the left side, which it represents, I just, for the time, I just placed X. It's, it's okay. It's a dummy variable. You can call it T, you can call it X, you can call it Z, whatever you want. You see that this model represents the total number of the death as a result of the cholera epidemic. You see that the function has two asymptotic behavior. The one which is important for us is that. What the x-axis represents, guys? What does it represent? The number of days. As yeah. I mentioned that to you when we described the model. The number of days. For example, at, after 2,000 days, after September the 1st, 18, what was the date? 1854. Uh, after 2,000 days, you see, we are going to have how many death? 1,300 almost people who dies from this epidemic if it remains untreated and uncontrolled. And you see that if you move on, the asymptotic behavior, you see that? It mm -hmm. becomes, goes all the way around 1,700 after 38,000 days, which is ridiculous, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, the asymptotic behavior after 42,000 days, it's insane because it's not gonna happen. It's irrational, huh? Yeah. Correct? But the point was that what happens on the first day? On the first on day, the first which day, if we just first. put on the plot, look at that. On the first day, I'm going to move on again. Zoom this in to go. To show the days. Because we are looking at the behavior of the function at the first days of the outbreak and epidemic. Oh my God, that's a beautiful example. Look at that. The first day, how much the function is that? We see it here, even it doesn't show anything. You see? The first day, the graph even is not plotted. You see that? Mm -hmm. It goes all, you have to go all the way up there the first day is going to be this. It 
should be around when you go around 91. After 91, you see some plots. You see, you see, you see the plot is coming. You see, guys, 91. Let me zoom more. It needs to be more zoomed because the scale is so huge. Okay, you see that guys? Still we do not have anything. The function is gonna show up here, 91. Where is the 91? We need to zoom more. You see 91 guys, around 91, the plot is coming towards, I should say, the right side of the X. You see, ah, there we are. We got it eventually. You see, sometimes you have to work with the plots. We are still going there. We are getting so close. Oh my God, it's so hard to work with this. We are there, we are almost there. Guys, look at that 91. You see that? It's almost close there. If I click on this point, it's almost just one. Look at that on the first day, guys, look at that. Do you see the coordinates? The X coordinates shows the number of the days, which is gonna be the September the 1st. huh? And what is the Y coordinate? 91. 91, which it means that the total number of the death, right? Yeah. You see that? It's going to be very minimal compared to the grand scale of, I should say, the modeling that. Okay, I'm going to show that also. I'm just going to stop sharing. Any questions on the graph, guys? Not really. Nothing? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to show the thing mathematically, the thing which is going to happen on the book which we have. <laughs> Guys, look at this one. This is the model which I said that this one is going to represent. So you do not even need to just plot the graph because it's going to be even much easier. What was the model? The model was the number of the dead equals to what? 91 yeah. plus 160 ln of what? Uh, t plus 1. T plus 1. Yes? Yeah. Guys, look at that. The first requirement is asking at September the 1st. September the 1st represents what is the time? Time zero, huh? Mm -hmm. Because we are talking number and counting the days. September the 1st, 18. September the 1st, 1854 becomes the initial day. We call it as there is no counting, zero. Then it means that the part A at September 1st, 1854, t is going to be zero, correct? Yeah. In this model, I'm going to plot t equal to zero. That means the d of the time, which is going to be zero, equals to 91 plus 160 ln of what? One. One. Okay, guys, what is ln of 1? 1. Go back, please, to the first property. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Previously, uh, we said that the log... 0. Previously, we said the log of 1 with respect to any base is what? Property zero. number 1. 0. It becomes zero because it's very easy to check that because as an exponential form, it's very easy to check that because B has to come to power of zero 
equal to one. Yeah. It was property number one, which we talked about that before. Property one. Remember it, guys. Property number one says that the log of one with any base is zero. Then ln of one is going to be zero because the base of ln is e, and it doesn't matter. Correct? Mm -hmm. Then the number of the debt, the total debt, becomes 91 plus 160 times zero. Mm -hmm. You see that? Then the whole expression on the right is gone. You see this? Uh, so is nine, nine, uh, 160 is gone. So is That's right. Then there is only 91 left. And you see how easy is that? Even I didn't use the plot to scroll it up, zoom it in, zoom it out, scroll it up, bring it down, get confused. I put only zero to this, ln and one becomes zero, and I'm there. Mm -hmm. You see guys, these properties is as huge, of huge importance to make your life easy. Any questions guys on the first part? No? no? Anyone? Uh, yes, wait. I have a quick question because I was late. I think you covered this already. Uh, is why is L L and one equals to log one over B? Like, sorry, why say it again? Like L and one, why L and one equals to log one over B? That's like, right. Oh yes, we said that the L N essentially is if you change the base to E, uh, the uh, nepper number. Then we call it ln. It's essentially like the log, but with the base e. Let me see if I can find this one. That's right. Look at this, Samantha. Yes. We said that if the log of f of x with the base e, we changed only the notation. We say that it's going to be ln. They are essentially the same thing. Just the base is different. So all the properties are the same, right? All the same. That's so true. Okay. Because the only thing we change. This is still a logarithmic function, but the base is E. Okay, yeah. That, that's the only difference. Yeah. Okay, and also for the second case, after 20 days, what happens after 20 days? We solve this. It becomes even easy because you say that the death toll Death of time, how much is that, guys? 20. 20. I'm going to go back to my model. becomes 91 plus 160 times what? Times L -N. 20. I'm looking for 20. becomes 21. That's correct? Oh, yeah, 21. Because I have 20. Let me just write it like that. 20 plus one and essentially becomes 91 plus 160 ln of 21. You can simply put in the calculator what is ln 21. Can you do that guys right now if you have any access to the calculator? Yes. Three, no way, 3.044. 3. LN21? Yeah. Can you multi multiply it with 116? Just hold on a second. Uh, 485, uh, 87. Plus 91? Plus 91, 500, 578. Okay, and that if the calculation is correct, then the total of number of the deaths after 21st days, guys, you see how drastic is that? 
520, 578. Are you sure, Samantha, of the number? Let me try this. Yeah, yeah, it should be. It, it should okay. be. It should we be. trust Samantha. We trust Samantha. I'm going to check that myself later. And then it becomes this. After 20 days, guys, after September the 1st, 9, 1845, you see the number of the death in London based on the model, which is represented by a ln function, goes to 578. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. You only need to just put the value inside the function and simplify that. Huh? Yeah. Any questions? No. No questions, Samantha? Ming Zhe? No questions. Oliver? Aria? It was Aria or Linda? Linda? No question. And Sean? Not at all. Not at all. Awesome. Thanks. If no questions, let's change the gear and talk about a different topic. Okay, now, what are we going to talk about? Okay. Now we are going to change the gear, guys. We're going to talk about a different concept, which is called the logarithmic... Equations. Guys, I'm going to give you lots of homework that you're going to deal with that for tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. Then it makes sure that you are catching up with the midterm exams, which is going to be by April 14. I'm going to check that the, the, the exact date of the midterm exams with you, but uh, I'm going to give you lots of assignments, lots of exercises for this coming Saturday and Sunday. And that's the best time to do when you are at home. Guys, I'm going to give you uh, two very simple examples for how to solve the logarithmic equations. Then we design an algorithm that what is the best approach to do the logarithmic equations to solve these kind of equations. The first thing is that, for example, I'm going to give you an example. And I said that, imagine that I have this equation. Mm -hmm. I have ln. Oh, what in writing? I have ln of, let's say, for example, 2x plus 8 equals to 1. This is one of the most simplest equations that you will ever see in the logarithmic equation. How to solve it, guys? If, if you ask me how to solve it, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to think of, because if you remember at the beginning of the session, we said that when we talked about the logarithmic functions, we said that it's just one side of the coin of which the other side is an exponential function. Mm -hmm. Then it makes sense that whenever I'm involved with this type of logarithmic equation, mm -hmm. I try to try to see how does it look like when I want to represent it in, let's say, uh, for example, the exponent function. But this one, it's also even much easier. Huh? Yeah. Wait. How is it going to be much easier, guys? Because I'm going to write it in an exponential format. In the exponential format, let me write it here. I hope everyone can see that. The ln, the base is going to be e, correct? Mm -hmm. It means that the e to the power, because it's the E, you go to the back seat of the Lamborghini, which is one, do you remember it, huh? Mm -hmm. e equals to, when you go to the, the driver's seat, which is gonna be what? Two X plus eight. Do you remember that? Yes. I didn't do anything except I used the definition of an exponential format. If you're still confused, I'm going to refer you back to this as a side note. I'm sorry, what's the title again? 
Like is logarithmic key. equations. Oh, uh, equations. Okay. This is not functions anymore. We, we assume that we learn the functions and their properties. Now we try to use them in order to solve the equations which they have a logarithmic functions inside. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna write this one in order in case if you have forgotten that principle. We said that the log of a b equals to c. It can be represented as a to the power c equals to b. I use this property as a definition in order to solve the equation above there. Is it clear for everyone? Yeah. Here, it's essentially using this property. Then as a result, what do I have? I have e equals to 2x plus 8. And the question is that it was the purpose of this logarithmic equation. And it was asking me, how much is that going to be the x? Mingzhe, can you solve this equation? Uh, 2x plus 1 equals to... Uh, this is 8, Mingzhe. Yeah. Oh, 2x plus 8 uh, equal to, to 1. That's right. It's 8 oh, okay. essentially. The thing which we do is that we look at the E as a number, and a number which we know. Then what I'm going to do that, I'm going to isolate 2x on one side of the equation. Huh? Mm -hmm. Then I take the other ones to the other side. becomes E minus 8, correct? Mm -hmm. I take 8 to the left and I keep 2x where it is. Mm -hmm. Then I have isolated the terms with the x on one side and the nouns on the other side. Then what's going to happen to the x? How much is that going to be the x? x is when you divide both sides by 2, which it means that x becomes uh, e minus 8 over, over 2. two. That's so true. And we are done. That's the thing that we were looking for. It. How much is the x? x is this number. And you see that with that logarithmic function, which the x, my variable, was inside the log, I was able to understand how much is the x there. Then you see that there are some more steps involved because we have to get rid of the ln. By using that property and using this definition to get there. Mm -hmm. It was the first example. I'm going to have more example that it's going to be more complex. Any questions, guys? It's a kind of a warm-up to see what is a logarithmic equation. No questions. Linda? No question. Aria? Mingzhe? No, no question. Sean? Not really. Linda? Oh, Linda asked. Oliver? No? Okay, now. We go to the next function, guys. We talk about another function. Another function, again, it involves logarithmic function inside the equation, which your variable is embedded inside the log function. What is that going to be? For example, I'm going to give you this function. I'm going to give you log x equals to 1 minus log x minus 3. I put the base for all of them to be equal to, to what? four. It's going to be the equation which I have to solve it. Okay. Please write this equation, guys.
Okay. And now, what's going to happen now? What is the strategy? Guys, I'm just going to give you a, a description with four steps in order to solve the logarithmic functions. Make sure that you write it as a side note for yourself and you follow the map whenever on the test or exams or anywhere. Sorry, you have the functions which they involve logarithmic terms inside. Okay, the first step. The first step is going to be, for example, guys, remember in the previous case, I said that you have to isolate the terms which they have the X on the one side and keep the terms which you know on the other side, huh? So you move one to the left side of the uh, equation? And That's you, right. Yeah, you move like log four over X to the right side. That's so true. The thing as Samantha mentioned, the fact is that guys, whenever you have an equation, which your variable that you're looking for is embedded inside the log function, the first step is that to take all the terms which they have the log function to one side of the equation. I see that, as Samantha said, I see on the left, I have log x with base four. On the right side, I see minus log of x minus three base four. Then the best thing is that take, I take the one on the right side, take it to the left mm -hmm. and keep one where it is. Then I should have what? I should have log, of x minus sign comes to the left side becomes what linda positive thanks plus log x minus 3 equals to 1 and i have my basis as 4 here correct mm -hmm. and i have my basis as 4 there and now, guys, I did step number one. Yeah, and then using the uh, preparations, like this is the plus, and both of them, they have a driver. So it means the log four, uh, x multiplied by x minus three. That's so true. That's so true. Then that is that, let me, let me first of all use this one to write something there before I forget it. It means that it was a step number one. Let me write it as step number one. Step number one. I isolated the terms with the log function. Step number two, let me find my notes and properties. Okay, in the properties, guys, that we talked about them, I should say, sessions ago, we said that property number five, look at the property number five. We said that property number five, if we have, we worked both sides of it yesterday. We said that if you have a Lamborghini car, which two drivers are sitting at the front there, front seat, and they are multiplied. It means that they are fighting. Then we give individually of them one Lamborghini car. One goes for the F, one goes for the X, and they are summed. Or on the other side, you can just do it reverse bar. You say that if I have two Lamborghini cars, which they are the sum, and they have the same base, it's a very crucial point, guys, they should have both the same base. Then what happens? You give them one Lamborghini, you sit them together. You multiply them together. Remember that? We worked a lot on that property yesterday. Mm -hmm. Still, some of you hasn't submitted your homework, but uh, catch up, guys. The midterm is close. I'm going to use that property for step number one. I see I have two Lamborghini cars with two drivers, and the bases are the same. It means what can I do? I can use property number five to give them only one car. I keep the base as three, as four. The base should always remain the same, 
It's not going to change. But I come to sit both those drivers together. One driver is x. The other driver is what? x minus 3. x minus 3. So true. Then what happens then? Still, I have the right side, which is going to be 1. Correct? Yeah. It is going to be what? Step number 2. Then is step number 1. Step number one was isolate the logarithm term and mm -hmm. one or side. Step number two was to use properties of the logarithm function, particularly properties five and six, to write them as the sum or the difference, to make it as a single term logarithm function. Mm -hmm. Then guys, the old purpose that you have to follow for step number two is that to do whatever you can that all the terms on the left side, that they are logarithm functions, they end up to be only one logarithm function. Huh? That, that's the plan, to have only one logarithm function on the left side. Then you tidy the, um, them up. You just, you just tidy them up into the one term. Mm -hmm. For the step number three, step number three, it's very obvious. I go back again to this note. I said that if you have a log function, you can just write that as an exponential format representation. You say a to the power c becomes b, correct? Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna follow the same thing. I step number three, I say, I start from the base, As a passenger's driver, jump into the car at the back seat, which is one. Then from the back seat of the Lamborghini, I jump up into the main driver's seat, right? Mm -hmm. Which is it essentially is the right, the, the driver's seat is x times x minus three, correct? Mm -hmm. And now, which step is that? Step number three. Step number three, you see that if you use the exponential definition and representation of the log function, you end up with an algebraic equation, which you are so familiar with. You see that? Mm -hmm. Then you see that, guys, from a nasty looking logarithm function, mm -hmm. you end up with something which you already know how to solve it. You see the difference between their appearance, between the look, between step three and the function? Yes. Okay. And step number four is to solve this equation. In order to solve this, what do you need to do? It's one is simple. You expand so this to this. The bracket equals to four equals to x squared minus three squared, or three x. That's right. Mm -hmm. becomes zero, yeah. which is going to be step number five. You mean four, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, four. Step number four. Step number four, yeah. Sorry. That's right. And this one is very easy to solve it. You know how to solve this equation, everyone? Yes, it equals to x minus four multiplied by x plus one. That's right. What are the roots then? Uh, x equals to 4 and x equals to my negative 1. That's right. Then everyone knows how to solve this equation? Yes. Linda? Yes. Aria? Aria? Mingji? Yes, I know. Oliver? Uh, yes, I got it. You know how to solve this equation, huh? Mm, yes. That's right. And Sean? <laughs> yep. Yeah, super. Then, guys, you see that from this nasty looking, I should say, look at function, we ended up to a function which all of us know how to deal with it. That's a simple quadratic equation. 
You see, then I followed, I summarized this before we just do the next example, which you are going to do that yourself. Then I summarize it. Then, guys, whenever you have on your test, quizzes, midterm, final test, whenever you have a function, an equation, which has a logarithmic terms, which your variable is inside the logarithmic function, the variable is on the driver's seat of that logarithmic function. Then you follow four steps to solve it. Step number one, isolate the terms with the log functions into one side of the equation. Then the left side becomes all with the log function. The other side remains with the numbers, with the parameters, non-quantities. Step number two, use properties that you have learned from one to seven, particle number five and six, to make the sum of the log functions into a product of one log function. In step number two, the old plan is that to only produce one term which has a log function. Then from two log, we end up with one. If we had three logs, we had to also end with one log function. Then from step number two, I use the definition how to represent the log function with an exponential function. These are, they are two sides of one coin. Then from there, from an exponential function, step number four, which is step number, the last one, is that I end up with an algebraic, I should say, equation, which I know how to solve it. Any questions, guys? Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Yes. Glad to hear it. Okay. Let's, uh, oh, I missed, I screwed all my papers. Okay, now. Let's do one example together, then I should say, I think we should be fine to go for today. Mm. Let's do this equation. What time is it, guys? We have uh, is, uh, 11, uh, sorry, 1052. 1052. Let's, uh, let's do this one. Let's see how far we can go with it. Guys, please, you try to solve this equation. Uh, let's, let's solve this. Mm. Let's solve this. If we cannot find time today, we do do that tomorrow then. Ln x plus 2 plus ln x minus 1 equals to ln 9x minus 17. There is a twist to this one. And it's also very easy. I give you two minutes to, to digest it first before we move to solve it. Follow step number one, two, three, and four. Guys, are you done? No, just hold on a second.
Guys, I'm going to start with it because we have not much time left. There are two ways to solve this equation. I just want you please to ask you to uh, do the methods which I have told you to work with. For this one, there is, I should say, a very minor way to do the, to solve the equation. Uh, you as a homework, do the methods which I showed that to you. I want to give you a simple method right now. And let's do this one. You do that as a homework, the other method. Mm -hmm. The first one is that, the first step, I don't isolate this one on the left, on the right. Because I have lower rate of a function, which they have the same base, I say that as a strategy, I make both sides of the equation to show the ln function. Huh? Mm -hmm. Then at the end, I say that the main drivers should be equal. Then I start from the left. And use property number five. Essentially, step number three, step number two, to use property number five to make them into one single LN function. I see I have two logarithms with the base yeah. E with two drivers. I just mm -hmm. ended up with one LN function with one Lamborghini, but with X plus two times X minus one. Correct? Yes. I see these two drivers together when they are having two different Lamborghinis to drive. So what do I have? I have on the other side, the right side, I have ln of what? ln of uh, 9x over... Minus 17. Oh, okay. That's Minus right. That's the, that's the shortcut method which I'm going to use. You please, as a homework, follow my method that you have to take it to the other side and also use property number six. Okay. Yeah. Then I end up this. I have a side note to remember. I say, when the log of A with the base C equals to the log of B with the base C, I can assume that A should equal to B. You see these guys? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. Because I have two log functions. They are both at one side. Their bases are the same. When they are equal, I say those two arguments should be equal too. That's one minor case which happens. But the main idea is that you always follow the strategy which I told you to take all the log functions to the left side. But this one, I can use this because I know that this identity exists as an exceptional case. Then as a result, I can assume that this argument, which is gonna be x plus two times x minus one, should equal to what? To nine x minus 17, correct? Mm -hmm. Then as a result, I'm, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to ask you, please, continue with this as a homework. Finish this method, which I showed you right now. Finish what I have done. And also at the same time, use the strategy which I told you to take ln 9x minus 17 to the other side and also use property number 6 to solve this equation. Then the homework which is going to submit tonight before 9 p.m., is that please finish this equation, find a value for the x from two methods, one which I started and the one which you learned it from the previous example. Does it make sense? Yes. Guys, the deadline thread is before 9 p.m. Please make sure that you submit your work before 9 p.m. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very easy. It's one of the easiest examples which we have done. Any questions, guys? Uh, Mr. Omid? Yes. Uh, if I submit uh, the homework to you, I can just send the email to you, right? Uh, when? Uh, before 9 a.m. Uh, p.m. Last night? Uh, today. It's a homework. Today's homework. Before 9 p.m. last night, huh? No, no, no. Today's homework, if I uh, 
send it to you. Oh, yeah. I can just oh send it yeah, to yeah. email you, right? Yes, yes, please. Okay. By okay. 9 p.m., please. Okay. okay. Thank you. Awesome. Any questions, guys? No. No. Have a very nice time. Have a nice day. I see you back tomorrow then. Don't forget about your homeworks, guys. Okay. See you. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you all tomorrow then. You can get, I should say, the video recorded of today's lecture. Today, I send a note to you then. Mm hmm Awesome. Any questions? Nope. No. No. Awesome, guys. Thanks all for attending the class today. And see I you. see you tomorrow all. Okay. <sighs> Yeah. Thank you. See, See you later. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.